All right, Luke, I know you couldn't wait for this. Tell us oh. all about AMD's confirmed Ryzen XT chips. Uh, is this like the fourth time we've talked about these or something? It's definitely at least the third. <laughs> It's got to it's gotta be up there. After much speculation by us and other people, AMD has finally revealed the new Ryzen XT chips and what they will look like. Ryzen 5 3600 XT will be $249, 6 core, 12 threads at 3.8 gigahertz base, 4.5 gigahertz boost, 95 watts. Ryzen 7 3800 XT, $399, 8 core, 16 threads, 3.9 gigahertz base, 4.7 gigahertz boost. You sound so excited. Boost. That's actually a pretty nice like price point for an eight core. Sure That's is, pretty, isn't it? I, that Ryzen seven, I think, is is pretty sweet. I suspect we'll see some of those move. Uh, Ryzen nine thirty nine hundred XT four hundred ninety nine dollars twelve cores twenty four threads three point eight gigahertz base four point seven gigahertz boost one hundred and five watts. Uh, the seven and the nine don't come with a cooler. The five comes with a Wraith Spire. I'm actually okay with that. Do you think it matters? that they include a cooler on a high-end CPU like that. No, I like that they include it on the five. Um, but yeah. the seven, if you're, if you're spending $400 before tax on a processor, like get a cooler for it. Yeah, I don't think it's that I, much I to ask. To no. es especially when you factor in that buying a CPU cooler that is really, you know, like good enough to run that CPU um, at a really nice low temperature, give it a nice long life, is not that expensive. Like, you know, Hyper 212 is in that $35 range, $40 range. Uh, I don't think it's a lot to ask to spend 10% of your CPU cost on decent cooling for it. We're still using Hyper 212s. Uh, there's a bunch of variants of it. Cooler Master, <laughs> it's hilarious because uh, the reason that I was looking at this they the want other day. People to move on, but they can't. Um, we did a video about, it's not actually up yet, but we did a video about what it actually takes to cool Intel's 10th gen CPUs. Because, and rightly so, we took some criticism in our launch review for not disclosing the cooler we were using when we said, hey, yeah. we got good thermal results. Um, and we were like, okay, that's a fair point. It was a total accident. It just wasn't put on the slide, um, unfortunately. But it's one of those things where people that are looking for looking to find fault will say, hey, that's you know, it's it was malice rather than stupidity. But I'm pleading stupidity here. Uh, anyway, the point is, um, we decided to take that criticism and go one step further, and actually take five different coolers at different price points. So let's talk about these new chips. The new XT processors um, will be drop-in compatible with any motherboard that is currently compatible with Ryzen third gen processors and to go along with the launch. I mean, I guess that makes sense. They're just like a little faster. Um, and ooh, boost clocks are not only a little bit higher, but also residency at these boost clocks is far better than the original release thanks to improvements in the manufacturing process. So that's sick. AMD is also announcing that StoreMI version 2.0 will release along with the new CPUs, utilizing a read-only caching approach rather than a tiered storage approach. Then it's been rebuilt from the ground up. That's probably a safer way to do it. So StoreMI was a licensed version of Enmodus's Fuse Drive software, and 2.0 will support any combination of any capacity hard drives and SSDs. Emphasis has been placed on ease of setup and use, which is a really positive thing because ease of setup was not a strong point for StoreMI V1.